Hello everybody and welcome to this, my first of three videos on the Nikon D70. This is a vintage, by, well by today's standards, vintage interchangeable lens DSLR. What does that mean? It means it's a digital single lens reflex, single lens right here. The light from this lens that goes back to this reflex mirror and then up through the pr prism housing or pentamere, I'm not sure which, into probably a prism in this in a camera of this vintage anyway to your viewfinder eyepiece right here digital simply means that right behind the mirror is instead of film obviously a digital sensor the d70 has an aps-c format 6.1 megapixel ccd sensor so this is a a very vintage ccd sensor camera the shutter speeds range from 30 seconds to 1 8,000th of a second, as well as bulb. It has a 3 frame per second burst speed with a 4 frame buffer when shooting raw. The viewfinder magnification is uh, 0.75x with 95% frame coverage. Okay, what does that mean? Let's assume that what you're seeing right now is what's going to be on the sensor and the image that's going to be recorded. What is in your viewfinder? is gonna be 75% of this size. And then 95% frame coverage means there's about two and a half percent on each side, the top and the bottom, that's on your image, but not in your viewfinder. So you have a little bit of room to crop after you get back to post. The ISO range on this camera is 200 to 1600. The flash syncs at 1 500th of a second according to published data, but because of the camera's hybrid electronic and mechanical shutter, a flash can be used at any shutter speed. Don't ask me how that works, by the way. I'm not a Nikon flash expert. I own exactly zero Nikon flashes. And it, uh, it could also be that the Wikipedia article on this is old enough that High Speed Sync didn't have its name yet. So um, at any rate, f let's just assume for the sake of argument and the course of these two vi three videos that the flash sync speed is 1 500th of a second. This also for video cannot record video. It is a still only camera. The target market for the Nikon D70 was the enthusiast. This was a an upper tier camera. It was made by Nikon in Thailand from 2004 until 2005. If you have your Nikon D70, let's do what we do and go through all of the things that are on it. In the second video, we'll talk about what all of them do except for the menu button. And in the third video, we'll go over all of the items on this camera that are in the menu. On the top here, technically on the sides, we have the strap bars. This is where you would connect a camera strap. Here we have the mode dial. And if you look next to the mode dial, kind of right in here, we have an index which tells you what mode the camera is set to. This is a pop-up flash assembly, which you can see right here pops up. Flash hot shoe. LCD screen and we'll go through everything on this LCD screen and what it means in video too. Here is your uh, LCD illumination button. Let's see it's uh, studio lights are a bit bright but when you push this down this glows kind of green so you can see the LCD at night. This is your metering mode button and exposure value compensation button right here. This is your power switch right here and shutter release and then this metering mode button has a green dot next to it. When you hold these two buttons with the green dots down for a little bit, there we go. Oh, I just <laughs> reset all of the camera's functions, I'll bet, didn't I? Because that just went from 174 to 562 photos, which means either I formatted the memory card, no big deal, or I reset this from RAW to JPEG. We'll see when we get into video too. <laughs> On the camera's front, we have the command wheel right here, decorative red swoosh, Autofocus assist light, depth of field preview button, lens communication lever, autofocus screw drive interface, lens mounting index, lens release button right here, autofocus mode selector switch, autofocus mode selector switch, autofocus or manual, then lens release button right here. Up here we have the flash pop up button. There we go. And then here we have an infrared port for your remote control. On this side of the camera, we have a few things that are covered by rubber covers. Down here, we have a USB connection. That is an old 
mini USB port, given that this was made in 2004, 2005, that's probably mini USB one. So very slow by today's standards. That would be used for transferring files to your computer or potentially charging. Uh, not sure if that, I'm not sure if mini USB one is suitable for charging or not. And uh, definitely for, for transferring files to and from your computer though. Here we have the DC in and video out ports right here. DC in, okay, so it will not, the USB will not charge your computer if it, or your camera rather, because if it would, then you wouldn't need this DC in port. This is strictly for data transfer. So DC in for, for wall power. And now I know what you're going to say, this camera, I just told you, can't do video, but here's a video out port. This is for connecting it to do things like slideshows on old analog TVs. This is not I mean, I guess maybe potentially there is a way to turn this into a video camera with that. If so, I don't know how to do it. You're still going to need an analog TV. On this side of the camera, we don't have anything at all. On the back of the camera, we have the bulk of our controls. The other green button, which is also the bracket button, your drive mode button. This here, you can see there's a format indicator. If you hold this button down with the, um, with the LCD illumination for a handful of seconds, you will format your CF card. So that's what that does. Viewfinder, diopter adjuster. And the diopter on this goes from negative 1.6 to one, negative 1 1.6 to positive 0 0.5. And you just slide it in here. I'm not honestly not sure which way is which. If your prescription, if your prescription is within that range, what you can do is set your, your lens to manual focus focus on something very close up and a finite point like the tip of a pencil. Make sure that it's stationary and your camera's on a tripod. Focus in here with your eye, get that in focus, take a picture, compare what you saw with what's, what's in the image, and then adjust this until what you see aligns with what's in the photo. That's the easiest way to do it. AEL AFL button, rear command dial, playback, menu, ISO selection and also zoom out in playback, white balance and also help and lock in playback, Qu image quality as well as enter button for when we're in the menu system as well as uh, I believe that's enlarge when we're in playback, LCD screen, cross pad, Co controls lock button, controls are unlocked, controls are locked, delete button, this little lamp right here will illuminate whenever you're using the CF card. This is your CF card access door, and here's the CF card itself. We'll talk in depth about CF card selection for this camera in video two. On the bottom of the camera, we have a handful of things. Tripod socket, Nikon digital camera, model D70, serial numbers somewhere in here, made in Taiwan. And then here is the battery chamber door. And all you have to do is open this up to get to the battery. We'll see this in detail in the second video when I can actually, when I have enough, you know, hand strength to actually open it. I do have some things not to do with your Nikon D70. Don't touch the shutter, which is behind the mirror. Don't touch the mirror by when you take the lens off. Also definitely don't touch the sensor. Your finger oils can mess up all of those things. And also if you get a smudge on the sensor, that's gonna be really difficult to get clean because the sensor is really buried back in there and it's kind of small. Don't leave your camera in your car because heat and cold can damage it. Heat can cause lubricating oils, especially in the lens to get very thin and get places they shouldn't be. And then when they're not super hot, they get back to their normal viscosity and things don't work properly. Likewise, extreme cold can cause the lubricating oils to become thick and gummy and get broken down, which can affect how your camera works. Also, it's a camera cameras are always the target of thieves. And uh, if someone who wants to break into your car sees this on your seat, they, well, will be incentivized to break into your car. So even if you're just popping into the, the gas station to pay for your gas on the way home or to an assignment, take your camera with you. Don't store your camera gear in a plastic bag or box unless you have a rechargeable desiccant pack that you keep recharged. Plastic is moisture permeable. And if you uh, allow moisture to get into that plastic, it can grow fungus on your optics, both in your lens and your camera, and that can affect the way that your image quality turns out. Don't let your Nikon D70 get wet. 
it is not a weather sealed camera and electronics don't really cooperate with moisture and water so getting this wet can cause significant issues now there is some protection of ports like this right here is pretty well protected but uh, you do not want to get this thing submerged in water and i also would not let this be out in a heavy rain quite frankly but a lot of the ports around here like the battery chamber not weather sealed be very easy for moisture to get into the battery chamber if that got wet and just remember that your nikon d70 is a precision tool that should be handled with care and respect and as long as you take care of your camera your camera will take care of you so that's everything for video one in the next video video two we're going to go over every single thing on this camera and how it works except for the um, menu system which we'll cover in video three i look forward to seeing you in video two